Alan and Annie and today we are going to cover off a few question and answers around the newest endurance sport, swim run. I'm a first time swim runner, Alan is not, <laughs> so he's helping me out. I've got loads of questions. I've got my first event coming up in six weeks, um, so I haven't got much time to, to fit things in, but Alan's going to help with some advice um, around three topics. We're going to break it into three chapters. The first is going to be what swim run is who swim run is for, and the race format. In the next episode of this um, video, we will go into choosing your swim run event, who your partner should be, because it is a team event, and how you can structure your training. And in the third one, what gear you need, because for every sport, there's a different set of gear. So that's the way we'll format it. I'll let Alan introduce himself, give you a bit of background, just so you can relate to us in our discussion. So, um, my background is um, lots of running and swimming at school and got into triathlon in my late 20s. Um, carried on through the triathlon, progressed through, did the Ironman thing, still do the Ironman thing, just got back from Challenge Roth, which was great fun. Um, but in 2014, a good friend of mine asked if I fancied doing this random event in Sweden called the Otelo. And, um, but why not? Not really knowing what, what it involved. Um, but it was swim run and we cracked into the training after we'd done our sort of token Ironman for the summer um, and then... <laughs> no, it says token Ironman, I'm like, <laughs> the biggest goal. <laughs> Just focusing on sort of running and swimming, we'd say it's great to be off the bike for a change. And so we trained all the way through till the first Monday of September, which is when they always hold the event. And um, went and did the swim run and had a, had a great event, ended up first non-Swedish finishes, which was a pleasant surprise. Very cool. And I uh, loved every minute of it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough, long old day. Um, but since 2014, there's so many sort of different swim runs that have popped up, and none of them are quite as brutal as long as Otelo. So that is the sort of the pinnacle of the sport, but there's plenty of other shorter distances to get your teeth into as well. Awesome, and we'll go more into, I think later on, more into what type of events there are, because it's not, it's not like triathlon where there are standard Olympic Ironman distances, um, there are a variation. Um, so first of all, okay, so what a swim run is, can I try and describe to you, and Please you, do, yeah. and you correct me, so I've done my research, obviously I've signed up for the event, so you hope to do my research. So to me, swim run is a, an event, an endurance event, with swimming and running in lots of different legs. So that's, I think there are three main differences from what I see from triathlon, or four actually, from triathlon. There's no bicycle involved, it's lots of different legs, so it's swim run, swim run, swim run, swim yep. run, as opposed to swim and run. You're with a partner, it's a team event. Yep. And you swim in your running gear and run in your swimming gear. So you set off on the start line with your stuff, you're carrying it. There aren't transitions where you pick up gear and drop gear off. So I think those are the four differences. Exactly. The only thing that you pick up en route is nutrition. Everything else yeah. to take with you. And you can take nutrition with you as well, but yeah. you've got to carry it. You get your aid stations, which are usually coincide with the checkpoint. Yeah, so cool. I've got it right. That's good. Um, as a newcomer, it's a huge, like it's an endurance event. I don't think I realised how hard it was when I signed up for it. In terms of who it's for, it is for people who have, who are more in the iron distance triathlon area. I've done two Olympic triathlons <laughs> a year ago, and five, five kilometre swim and things like that. So I'm not, I'm not scared about it, but I do recognise that, well, it's, I'm, I'm participating sure. as opposed to competing. Hmm. Um, but I think that's the general vibe, right? It's more like an adventure event. It's trails, it's wilderness swimming. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's an adventure race. Um, there is obviously you're going to get your competitors that sort of want to win and want to go as fast as possible, and you've got that one too. <laughs> uh, and you've got people who just sort of want to have an amazing day out, and you do get to see stunning parts of the countryside. So whether you're doing it in Sweden or Gower, um, you'll get to see sort of places that you won't usually even gain access to because yeah. you're running and swimming. Um, and so it's fantastic. Yes, yeah, I know on the Gower event I'm doing on the website, it's very specific. You do not even try and train for this event in the location because it's really dangerous. Yeah. Like, you need the water safety guys there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, so that's cool, yeah. I mean, and then there's well, something we'll go into later in terms of the different, like there's lake swims, there's sea swims. Um, but let's go into that later when we talk about the range sure. of different events, I think. Um, from, a, from an experience point of view, and you've done triathlons and an Ironman, distance before, what do you think is the toughest thing about a swim run? A lot of people find sort of swimming with the trainers on a bit of a challenge to start with, so that's something you definitely want to practice. 
um, and obviously you are allowed the use of hand paddles. Yeah. But again, it's something that you really need to practice if you're sort of going to a swim run and you haven't practiced using hand paddles and you haven't practiced using trainers and then you're trying to use both, you're going to put one, your shoulders under a tremendous amount of strain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've um, tried to train with them. And, and, and two, you're, you're finding it a bit overwhelming. So it's just sort of, it, it's great in, in terms of once you get used to it, the hand paddles really sort of make life so much easier. You, you're allowed a, a pool boy to sort of help keep yeah. your feet higher, um, but you need to get used to it and you need to practice. So yeah, who, who swim runs for? It is, it is people who are ready for for an adventure, mm. for endurance. I mean, it's, we're talking like ten hours out on the course. For but what does a runner, uh, what does a winner normally come in at? Um, it depends. If if you're looking at the Otolo, which is the longest form, which is the form, World Championship, the World Championships, yeah. um, that is the winning time is around eight and a half hours. However. Most of that's the only race of that distance. Most of the other races, the winning time is usually between four and six hours, okay. um, and the sort of sort of the teams will then go out to maybe eight or nine hours. So okay. um, Otolo is roughly double the distance of a lot of other races. Yeah. So you, you which is why you need those points to build up into that, like the like Brecca, for example, is a merit race. Yeah, exactly. So down. sort of you, okay. you've got to almost sort of get gain access, sort of earn the right to compete in Otolo now. Okay. Yeah, it's getting more and more popular. Yeah. Um, how do you think most people are finding out about Swim Run right now? I'm getting approached by people in my club who, who have found out about Clatton it. Clatton Club, that is. Yes, yeah. um, I'm part of a club called Clatton Chasers and, and it's a sort of huge, huge triathlon club. And a lot of people have done the Olympic, done the half, yeah. maybe, maybe tried an Ironman, or just looking for a new challenge and, and love yeah. um, sort of adventure racing. And Swim Run offers this sort of great, different challenge. Um, and so it's really drawing people to it and, and it's, it's growing through social media because because it's so stunning you get so many amazing photos um, of sort of people competing and when you see a picture of someone running with a wetsuit chopped up to bits and the hand paddles on it kind of people start asking questions of what's going on yeah. um, and then find out about swim running yeah love the idea awesome yeah I've been, I've been swimming at a lake out in the country and people are just like, why are you putting your trainers on and getting in the water? Yeah. Like, oh, and it really interesting, like experienced triathletes have heard of swim run, but not many people know the concept. They've, they've made assumptions. They're like, okay, good, swimming and running. Yeah. But not many people know that it's all the different, like mm. it's, it's shorter distances and more often kind of thing. So it's quite fun, like introducing them and be like, I'm, I'm, I'm a pioneer apparently yeah, in the sport, which is ridiculous because I shouldn't be. But um, <laughs> we'll see. And we've touched on it briefly in terms of comparing it to other endurance sports. But what do you think makes the swim run element stand out? I think you're getting put in a unique part of the, the world and you're often going point to point or a big circuit and you're just in nature and it's, yeah. it's fantastic and then you get to swim in nature as well as run all over the place whereas a triathlon is a little bit more like you do laps of the bike course, laps of the run course and it's a bit more sterile. I mean it's, it's great and it's, yeah, it's different yeah. but the, the, the sort of freedom aspect and I think the team aspect as well is a lot of people when I used to play rugby and mm -hmm. sort of love the team aspect of, of sport and sort of have to give that up because of injury and got into sort of other sports and having having a mate to share the experience with yeah. just uh, again just sort of magnifies the experience and it's just it's great sort of running along sort of talking rubbish with your mate yeah so. awesome there you're right covered off like roughly what it is who it's for but more specifically on like the format of the race mm. so quite often registration is the night before uh, maybe the morning of the race um, you sort of will get a, a briefing and um, hopefully you've got a map there'll be a kit check um, and depending on, on what race it is there'll be different sort of mandatory sort of kit that you need sometimes compass sometimes there'll be a sort of some sort of beak, um, beacon or locator that you'll need to okay. take um, maybe a sort of pressure pack, um, sort of um, first aid kit of some sort. So, so they'll check all of that. Then when you start, uh, you will kick off and be looking for sort of markers. So during the run, quite often they use sort of hazard tape and they'll yeah. tie it around bits of trees, yeah. maybe sawdust in the ground, so you're looking for that. You've also got a waterproof map that is part of the mandatory kit just in case. Yeah. Um, and then you will get to a swim point and 
For the shorter swim points, it's very straightforward because you can just see. Sort of yeah, and shorts like 400 meters, right? Yeah, exactly. And the, sh the swim I'm, in the race I'm doing, I'm gonna call it an event, not mm. a race, because I'm not racing it. Mm. it. The shortest is 400, and the longest is one kilometer or 1.1 mm. or something. So it's not that the distances are not long. No, it's bite-sized chunks, which yeah. is the beauty of it. So even if you're intimidated by huge swims. Um, it might be sort of 5k worth of swimming, but the longest swim might say 8 km. km. Yeah. And they might have a big flag, or sometimes for the further away, like some sort of strobe or something, just so it's very, very clear you can sight while you're swimming. And then there'll be a couple of safety sort of people in the water in canoes, cool. um, just sort of keeping on proceedings. Yeah, awesome. And then that's something that I, because I've seen photos, right, and people are scrambling out on mm. rocks. And we'll get in the gear again, we'll get into the kind of trainers that are suitable for that. but. Is it like, are you, are, some people are diving into water, like I'm never going to dive into water because I have no idea how deep mm. it is. All that kind of getting in and out stuff, is it quite obvious when you get there? There'll be sort of someone standing sort of in a, sort of the entry point. Okay. Uh, but you, you need to sort of work out how you're going to get in, you've got to be sort of sensible. They'll tell you sort of, they usually say sort of don't dive okay. for sort of your own safety. Um, but it can be slippy, sort of the rocks can be treacherous. Sort of getting in and getting out is probably sort of the most risky part of the day. Yeah. Um, that's part of the fun. It's 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 not sanitized like a lot yeah, of sort it's, of races. There, you you've got to be careful and sort of finishing the day. Um, a big part of that is, is staying safe and sort of watching your, your sort of footing yeah. on these things. Um, so yeah, and entering the water, sort of getting in slowly. Um, sort of keeping an eye on your teammate and then obviously sort of scrambling out the water, sort of coming out, working out what's the best best way to get out. Yeah. Um, and so it could be slipping. Yeah, and just paddle for a bit and look, okay. Cool. Yeah, exactly. And, and they'll try to pick a point where there is a sort of an easy way out. They're not gonna sort of pick a, <laughs> a sheer sort of area. So um, Please. Yeah, no, I mean it's one of those things it can't be that complicated because lots of no, people are doing this, no, but at the same exactly. time I've just seen these photos and I'm like, mm. <laughs> And we talked about compasses. Like most most swim runs are signpost. Like they're not they're not navigation events. No, the, the compass and the map is there in case you sort of take a little wrong turn, um, which is it, it, all the courses are very well marked. But sometimes, especially towards the end of the day, you kind of switch off. You're, yeah, you're, you're tired and fatigued, and there'll be a nice clear marked sign there, and you'll just run straight past it because you're not paying attention because you're tired, and that path looks like it should be the way. Uh, you realise you've gone wrong and usually it's just a case of, hang on a minute, I haven't seen a bit of ticker tape or a sign for the last sort of, 100 metres, 200 metres. So you just retrace your steps and then find yeah. sort of, the last okay. point. Worst case scenario, you have your compass and your map and you can sort of work these things yeah. out. There's usually other teams around, don't necessarily just blindly follow the team in front, but um, if you sort of go back on yourself, yeah, you, you don't get lost. Cool. <laughs> um, that's cool. I think I've got a grasp of, yeah, I've got it right. There's a few things here mm. different to what I thought. Um, so, yeah, what is swim run, who swim runs for, and the race format? Um, cool. I think we've covered that one. Hopefully, that was useful. Um, if you've got any questions, just comment below and we will get Alan <laughs> to answer them because I won't be able to as you can tell um, but hopefully that's useful the next chapter we'll be going into choosing your event your teammate and training so tune back in thank you